Assalamu alaikum. Hi there friends. Welcome back to NazisKitchenFun.com. Today I'm sharing a very special recipe for my sweet mitai. This is a real popular um, sweet recipe in the Pakistani and Indian community. Um, I've got the recipe from my aunt, so it's a real special recipe for me. Please don't give up when you're making this or get discouraged because believe me, once you make this a couple times, you're going to be a pro at this and it's going to turn out excellent. So let's start off by um, getting a saucepan and adding two cups of water and one cup of sugar. This is going to be the shira, the shira syrup for the mitai, kind of like the glaze for the mitai. Now I've got 10 card cardamom seeds, cardamons, and I went ahead and took out seeds out of 10 of them. You can either use crushed, powdered, or just go ahead and put that in. We're going to put that on medium heat, and we're going to let that boil until it turns into a real thick consistency. In the meantime, get two cups of all-purpose flour maida, and get one cup of margarine and butter. So that means half cup of margarine, half, half cup of butter it has to be thawed it cannot be melted butter because I've made this recipe too many times even a couple of times this week because I wanted it to be perfect to share with all of you guys so make sure that the butter is not melted otherwise your matai will not turn out right now um, it has to be at room temperature so if you know you're going to be making this take it out the day before the night before or just make sure it's at room temperature anyways go ahead and mix that all together kind of like you would for a pastry or a pie crust cutting that butter right into the flour making sure that it goes all the way through um, you can use a pastry cutter or you can just use your clean washed hands and go ahead and just um, crumble the dough. Don't exactly knead the dough with your hands like you would for atta. You have to kind of use your palms, put the flour be in between and go ahead and just, you know, cut through the flour making sure the the butter and the margarine is well incorporated so I've added half and I've mixed that all together then I've added the other half that I had in the cup to, to make sure that it all gets incorporated into the flour so go ahead and mix that up all nicely making sure that it's you know really cutting in through the dough and um, once you go ahead and do that like I said you can use a pastry cutter um, or you could use your hands. I use both. At some point when my hands get tired, I use the pastry cutter, but I usually use my hand. So your dough should look like this after mixing it up. Then after that, we're going to add an additional teaspoon of butter. Just to make sure that our dough is ready, we're going to mix it all up just like that. Making sure that, you know, it just um, turns out perfectly nice and soft just like that. Then after that, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and form the mitai balls, um, the sweet mitai. So we're going to go ahead and just mix all that up together. It's kind of a little hard work, but believe me, it pays off at the end. So you should form a ball just like that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to shape like a sikh, a sikh kebab kind of shape. We're going to roll that out and we're going to go ahead and twist making little balls of mitai. Now make sure that they're no bigger than an inch. <clears throat> it has to be like an inch or smaller otherwise your metai will be raw from the inside so don't get too happy on making them really big make sure they're small and in the meantime go ahead and heat up your oil make sure that it's not too hot make sure it's not that cold make sure it's at the perfect um temperature now just want to let you guys know what the shira the syrup is going to be looking like at this time it should be bubbling up and it should be getting thicker. So go ahead and pop your mate into the oil, making sure that it's frying up really nice. Now you can use a thong, a fork, or anything that you can just turn them around gently once you put the mate in. Now we want the color to be nice and light golden brown. We do not want them to be really dark and we do not want them to be really light otherwise they'll be raw from the inside. <clears throat> and for me the mitai, I really like the taste of the mitai once it's like a couple of days old. It tastes really nice right away but I just personally like the mitai after a couple of days. So um, the your mitai should be looking like this at this time nice and light golden brown. Once you know that it's that color and you know that it's you would assume that it's done from the inside go ahead and drain them onto a paper towel. Now your shira the syrup should be looking like this. The water syrup should be looking like this. We need it about an one inch to half anywhere from half inch to one inch consistency. Once that's done and your mitai is done while it's still hot go ahead and 
pull, throw in the mitai balls, making sure that they're all getting covered with the syrup. Now this is the sweet syrup, kind of like donuts. We need them all to be glazed. <coughs> And we, th we need them to be glazed nicely, making sure that they're all getting covered. So this is the fun part. Make sure one by one that they're all getting covered in that syrup right there. Make sure the syrup's not too cold. Make sure it's not too hot. So I would wait about 10 minutes after it boils. And just like that. Now the fun part, you need a Ziploc bag. We're going to add one cup of sugar in there and we're going to throw in about four to five metai balls in there. And what we're going to do is we're just going to shake it up, shake it up. We're going to shake it up just like that, making sure all the sugar gets onto the metai just like that. Now I have my tea ready right there because I was anticipating it all day. I couldn't wait and it's really cold here in North Carolina. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and serve our metay. They're all done. Now I just wanted to let you guys know again, please do not make them that big. They can't be really large, really big. Make sure they're like an inch or smaller. They'll be nicer, crunchier, and tastier. Please do not give up on the recipe. If you don't, if it doesn't turn out right from you the first time, try again and again. Believe me, I've made this numerous times. It's a real special recipe and I'm sharing it with all you guys so I hope you guys will enjoy it it's been a pleasure sharing this recipe with all of you guys I think that is really nice and don't forget to brew your cup of coffee or your cup of tea and I got this recipe from my aunt so it's a real special recipe for me and I hope that you guys will really enjoy this recipe if you have any questions or comments please leave them below and I'll be more than